yeah, uh, last uh, panelist to speak, uh, Julien Belin, um, from uh, Spain, um, former member of uh, parliament. Um, and uh, we uh, also have some questions for you. So um, uh, there is, especially in like uh, popular media, a lot of um, reporting that uh, Spain had implemented a uh, unconditional basic income. Um, is that true or what's, what's your perspective on that? Well, yeah, uh, thanks uh, for the invitation and yeah, to say hello to many people I have seen uh, I haven't seen for, for a lot of months or years. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, I think it's a it's a uh, a question I'd like to to clarify, because uh, in Spain uh, it was approved on May 2020 what was called a minimum living income, and this minimum living income is simply a minimum income program. And why do I say this? As you said, um, both national international press, they reported that uh, many, many times that uh, Spain introduced a basic income. For example, the BBC or, or Al Jazeera did this, no? So uh, there were headlines where we could read Spain introduces a basic income to tackle poverty. And that's not true. So it's simply a minimum income program that aims to provide um, temporary resources uh, to cover um, a lack of income and we which is, of course, uh, accompanied by a labor intervention process. So as you all know, this has nothing to do with basic income. Yeah? This minimum living income is granted to families that meet very precise conditions and the basic, basic income is universal, individual, and unconditional. So this national minimum income uh, has made it possible to uh, overcome uh, a deficit we had in terms of minimum income programs uh, compared to Europe. Uh, however, this uh, doesn't mean that in Spain uh, before there was no a minimum income program. And in fact, we had 17 minimum income programs, uh, one for each Spanish uh, autonomous co uh, community, and they are still ongoing. So now we have 18 minimum income programs. So social inclusion in Spain is really uh, highly decentralized. And uh, the data we have collected so far uh, for this minimum income uh, is extremely worrying. Um, conditionality and bureaucracy are so extreme uh, that uh, they have made of this network a real funnel. Uh, for example, they ask you up to uh, 26 official documents uh, that many are already in possession of the administration. So there has been a great problem of First, political communication by the government. They created really high expectations that um, they have come uh, face to face with, with reality. And just to put an example, the minimum income program was intended to cover um, 850,000 uh, families. And this moment, there were 837 applications submitted, and only 1.5% 1, 1 of those applications have been approved and paid, and paid. So there's a real prob problem with this uh, because many people have been without any income for more than six, seven, eight months uh, due to the pandemic and um, an optimal solution has not been given for, for from Spain, a Spanish public institution. So it's basically as far away from a basic income as it could yeah, possibly be. It is. <laughs> um, so, um, <laughs> Hopefully, uh, um, you have a little bit um, of more um, uh, optimistic um, answers um, to my next question. What are, what are the approaches um, towards a, a true basic income uh, in the Green Party and uh, in Podemos in, in Spain? Yeah, uh, first, um, Spanish Greens um, have been defending basic income for, for many years. Um, they have been leading debates to their congresses and allowing to, allowing to broaden the, the knowledge of public opinion on basic income uh, every time the opportunity arises. And I really believe uh, that Greens in Spain do it from, from, this heart, from the heart uh, because they believe basic income as an effective tool uh, to put these people at the center of public policies and, and to meet um, or to help meet, let's say, challenges that we have to face in the 21st century. Regarding uh, Podemos, 
it's true that uh, it was a party that put the debate on of basic income at the center of the political agenda when it first ran two elections. There were the European elections of 2014, uh, and there was basic income in the in the political program. But uh, since then, uh, unfortunately, uh, basic income has been disappearing from from the political program uh, to the point where they openly defend nowadays minimum income programs. And although uh, it's true that a uh, large part of Podemos voters are basic income supporters. Uh, the, cur the current uh, leadership of Podemos is not. So there's one very interesting thing <laughs> that uh, it could give us uh, for a very broad study. And, and it's the positive correlation between political parties, their distance from power and their support for basic income. No? The farther they are from power, the more they support basic income. That's a um, not not to yeah that it, it most likely holds true your your hypothesis um, but it's it's not one that makes us uh, very optimistic so uh, hopefully we see um, more and more parties all over Europe that uh, um, keep faith and keep commitment to the idea of a basic income while they are getting closer or getting more power. Um, uh, I have one uh, last question to you. So um, we've discussed this with uh, several people. Um, what are your thoughts on a basic income on a European level? Well, I think it could be uh, really interesting. And, and I think it could be really interesting for five main reasons. First, uh, it would be a, a redistributive mechanism that uh, apart from guaranteeing everyone's material existence, I think it would allow us to us who live in Europe to, to benefit equally from, from the wealth generated thanks to the European integration. Second, I think it would be a solidarity mechanism in the form of uh, transnational fiscal transfers, uh, which uh, is really necessary for, for the Eurozone to reduce uh, economic and uh, social asymmetries and imbalances. Third, I think it could be really interesting uh, to reduce some some of the factors for migration within the European Union. So it could help us uh, to avoid the negative effects, let's say, of, of brain drying in certain countries. And four, uh, I would say it could mm, really need it right now, uh, strength and uh, the legitimacy and citizen support for the European project. And uh, finally, I would say that it would make uh, possible to uh, improve the material condition of the vast majority of European citizens, uh, who of course would have the right to unconditional income without uh, administrative obstacles or the risk of social stigma associated with, with unconditional incomes. No? So I think it could be a great idea to put it on, on the European level, and I think there are five main uh, benefits.